Do you actually think that one of them is going to be in a room where Hal Steinbrenner and Steve Cohen mutually agree no. that we're not going to jack each other up? No. And then one of those people tells Andy Marduccio? No. Right. Period. Stop. What did you call him, by the way? Who? <laughs> what? What? It's just stupid. Yeah, I, I think that... Listen, I know, you, like, I understand that your career is at a crossroads. <laughs> I get it. I respect it. And you're desperate. You don't break a single story. You're on the Met watch, and you haven't broken a Met story in God knows how long. You get beaten by national guys who don't even care about the Mets until their phone rings with a legitimate Met insider giving them news. So you're desperate to try to make yourself relevant in the world of being a baseball insider. But this is just garbage. And we got to respond to it. And here's what's worse. Steve Cohen's got to respond to it yeah. internally or externally. You're looking for phone records, yeah. Greg. The Yankees have to respond to it. The commissioner has to look into it. The Players Association. You set off this really bad domino effect, and it's not based on anything real. And you're protected as a journalist, quote-unquote, by the government that says you never have to reveal your source. Right. It's not like we're ever going to know who the quote-unquote Met sources are. Okay, up. Oh, breaking news. I have breaking news, Evan. Yes. Yankee people. <laughs> Yankee people. My friends who wear Yankee jerseys in Brooklyn are now Yankee people. Right. Tell me there's no way the Mets are going to sign Aaron Judge. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. I have a couple of Met friends. Fr friends. Uh, Chris Beldotti. Uh, Kyle's friend of mine owns uh, the bakery in Stanford, is a Met fan, thus making him a Met people. Met people tell me that the New York Mets are not going to... Oh, what's that? Yankees? I'm sorry. Yankees are not going to sign the Grom. By the way, Woo! Mets people, you're so right, could be me. Like, I'm a Mets person, right. technically. Stupid. <laughs> you're right. And now you got all these people going crazy about it. Yeah, I... Now, the, the I want to be clear. The one thing, though, is... it. If there's truth to the Mets not wanting to bid on Aaron Judge because of his ties to the Yankees, that's not a good reason. I'm just telling you right now. Like, if the Mets don't want to bid on Aaron Judge because, hey, we already have money invested in Lindor, right. in Scherzer, hopefully DeGrom, and oh, by the way, a real apple of our eye is Shohei Otani next year, I get it. Like, I totally understand that. But if you're not bidding on the preeminent slugger in baseball because, well, we don't want to start a war with the Yankees. I think you'd agree with me. That's not a good reason. No, and by the way, if you know anything at all about Steve Cohen, I'll take Hal out of the equation for a second. You know that Steve Cohen shakes hands and has breakfast with people he competes against. And when he buries them, uh, when it's either, you know, liquidating a company, buying a stock, selling a stock, investing in stuff, right? He could have eaten breakfast with you, kissed your kids good bed to uh, good night to go to bed, and still screwed you because it's good for business. Right. Right? So if you know anything about how Steve Cohen built his multi-billion dollar empire, it's on guile, it's on smarts, it's on reading other people, the bluff, the art of the deal, all that crap, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you also put a knife in your friend's back because it's good for your business. So why? And I want to be clear. Not in the world we all live in. Right. In the world, guys that are that successful financially. So, so there's no way that if Steve Cohen thought we could get Aaron Judge for whatever the price is, and my baseball guys say we're going after him and we're going to get him, there is no way that a guy that built his empire on crazy deals like that is going to say to Billy Epler, don't do it. I promise Al. So there are other reasons why the Mets are clearly not in on Aaron Judge then, Maybe. in your opinion. Yes. Okay, that's fine. I hope that's the no, answer. No, no, I'm sorry. I've been misheard you. I apologize. Why are the Mets not in on Aaron I, Judge? I don't know that they're not. There's been no the smoke to I, the fire. Here's the only There's thing I would nothing. say. Yeah. I want to be very clear about this. I, I think the Mets probably did kick the tires. And I think if the reason that the Mets are not being viewed as a aggressive or even active suitor for Aaron Judge, it's because of this one thing. Aaron Judge's agent said if, I, if he stays in New York... He's only going to be a the Yankee. agent's not going to say that, though, because why would he eliminate a bidder? I'm just saying. Agent's not saying the that. the only thing I can think of. No, no, but would you agree that the agent at this stage of free agency is not saying that in all likelihood? Well, I mean, Look, it I, makes sense. Craig, yes. I can give yes. you good, smart reasons why the Mets shouldn't pursue Aaron Judge. Okay. I can. Like, the one I just gave you, their eye is Otani. And while Steve Cohn's a billionaire, he's not going to have a $500 million payroll. Fair There's enough. a limit at some point. Sure. I get that. 
If that's the reason, okay, fine. I hope that it's not because of some kind of mutual respect for Hal Steinbrenner because that's not a good reason. I can tell you almost as a guaranteed fact that's not the reason. Good. Okay, good. I that's can't what tell I you hear. what the reason is if okay. there is a reason. And by the way, maybe they are talking to Judge and they're being stealth about it. We don't know. We're not going to know until Judge signs somewhere and then reporter says, what other teams made you right. an Did offer? you ever get a call? Right. From the Mets. Like, we have already heard that the Yankees are attached to Brandon Nimmo. That's a legitimate rule yeah, that's out Among there, other right? teams, but yes, and we have would, heard that. And why wouldn't they be, by the, the way? They'd be and, stupid not to And be. I'm not offended by that. Brandon Nimmo's a good baseball player. He's also my guy. He is your guy. That's right. That's right. You, you love, and your other guy's also a free agent, but no one talks about him. Your boy, J-Mo, Jamison Tyone's a free agent. Is yeah. he still your guy, or did you get rid of him? I got to be honest. I kind of dropped him off on the curb. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie to you. I gave him one last shot in that playoff game. I, ugh. Yeah, no more. You're done. Done. To be listen, we shouldn't have brought you in here anyway. We did it as a favor to Garrett Cole because he was Garrett's best friend in Pittsburgh, and I respect that. You know, I would think if I went to Spike and the architect and said, "Look, my best friend's available, bring him in yeah. as a producer." Right. No offense, guys, but that's the way it goes. Um, <laughs> I would hope that the company would say yes, of course. Right. And then if he doesn't perform well, I'd have to own the fact he didn't perform well. I respect you. I get rid of him. I'm good with it. J-Mo, thank you for nothing. Peace out. Wow, what loyalty Craig has to J-Mo. Loved him for about five minutes. Like Get I out of here, I'm done. Brandon Nimmo's been my guy <laughs> for two years now. By the way, breaking NFL news, uh, Dominican Sue is back in the NFL. How about that? Did he play still? <laughs> How old um, is he now? He's like 40, I think. I don't know. Nah, but not that old. So uh, you want to take a guess where he's going? Well, Philadelphia just signed Linval Joseph, which is a good move that was because yesterday, their right? biggest kind of weakness right now is their inability to stop the run. So it sort of makes sense on paper. So I'm going to say a contending team. I will say that is correct. A contending team. Mm -hmm. Defensive line help. Would Philadelphia sign another guy? Probably not. So I'm going to rule them out. The Rams now suck. Well, they wouldn't bring him back. Uh, I, will, I will tell you that you are thinking uh, in a very smart way. Oh, I'm thinking in a smart way. I like that. Who is the Green Bay Packers? Oh, you're very close. Damn it. Who very is the close. Minnesota Vikings? Oh, you're less close. All right, go ahead. Yes. Just tell me. Dominican Sue has reached an agreement on a one-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, so I was... <laughs> Wait a second. There you go. So I should have just stopped should've on that? Should have just stopped right there. You would have had it. Yeah. So the Eagles get Linvale Joseph and Dominican Sue. And you know what's amazing about that? Look, free agents, who knows what they've left in the tank, He's obviously. He's 35 years old, by Fair the way. Fair enough. And again, third down specialist, maybe. He's not going to play me down, obviously. I mean, he played last stage. year and was actually pretty good, so he didn't look like he was yeah, done a year ago. Get to the passer kind of thing, whatever it may be. But I, it's, here's what's fascinating about it. Some people don't know how to handle a single loss. I know, right? Right. I was one just loss, kidding. and all so, of a sudden we're panicking. So the Philadelphia Eagles have one week, well, one main weakness on defense that has sort of been exposed this season. Sure. Whether it was by the Texans a week earlier, by the Lions early in the season, and obviously by Washington, their inability to stop the run. So in forty-eight hours, yep. they say, "Okay, yep, we can't stop the run." And Linville Joseph, Namakong Su, let's go. If you had any doubt whether or not the Eagles fancy themselves as a Super Bowl contender this year, whether it was acquiring Quinn, now they acquire Sue, they acquired Joseph late yesterday, they have made it very, very clear. Well, we think we got the goods, Craig, and we're going for it. We are 11 weeks into this season. Ask yourself this in the NFC go. who's the favorite to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl? Eagles. It's the Eagles. Yeah. Who's second? I think is it the Vikings? I think it's the Vikings okay. for sure. They're eight, in one. Eight one, I get and it. And then uh, I don't think this is, you know, I'm not you know, breaking any uh, new uh, territory here. And then who? I think San Francisco's third. Totally agree with you, yeah. but I think there's a drop off. And they're off. in second place in their own division. And but. it shows you how wide open the NFC is. Yeah. And by the way, this conversation should make Giant fans tingle. Because as flawed as you may be, as imperfect as you may be, that's how wide open yeah. this entire conference is. Yeah. The New York Giants, listen, I think this is a trap game. We'll get into that more later today as we discussed a little bit yesterday. I think this is a scary game for the Giants uh, for all the obvious reasons. You know, you, you, you know win on uh, last Sunday against the Texans. You got the huge divisional game against the Cowboys coming up on Thanksgiving. And now you have the Lions who are not a pushover. No. And that's the thing. Their record does not belie exactly how they've played this year. Uh, and they can run the ball. And the Giants' defense, like a lot of teams, has shown some weaknesses. 
defensively hey, against the Craig, run. Just look at the second half of the game against the Texans. They were able to erase it because they forced big turnovers. And the Giant defense overall statistically hasn't been good. They just make big plays when they have to. They stop you on third down. They're able to force a big turnover. Yeah. The Lion offense can move against this Giant defense. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They're going to score. And that's why I almost look at this game and wonder... Can the Giants score 30 points? They haven't done it. They don't do it often. Right. Look back at the last three years. How often have the New York Giants scored 30 points in a game? And I kind of look at this game and say, if they're going to win it, they're going to have to put up 30, which is a rarity. Yep. Listen, they haven't done it often. We got lots to do between the baseball nonsense, Judge and DeGrom, the Mets, the Yankees, and, of course, uh, there's football tonight, Green Bay, Tennessee, and how that impacts the Giants. By the way, yeah. October of 2020. October of 2020. That's the last time the New York Giants scored 30 points in a game. Is that right? So you take the entire season last year. Yeah. You take the first nine weeks this season. So that gets you to 20. Oh, my math is par- terrible. 26 games. Right. Plus, plus the last that. six in uh, 20. You have a 30 plus game streak of yeah. not putting up 30 in a game. And while it's not an exact science here, they can win this game without scoring 30. Sure. If the Lions are going to put points on the board, we may need to see the Giants do something they haven't done in a couple of years. And not a shock, the uh, weather people in Buffalo got the original forecast wrong. No big surprise there, but they got it wrong in a weird way. They were originally expecting 30 inches of snow for Sunday's game between the Browns and the Bills. I only bring it up now because it has a major impact on our beloved New York Jets. Maybe the Bills can lose three games in a row. They are now expecting, I'm not making this up, and I've never heard of a storm like this. I lived in Buffalo. I lived in Cleveland. I know what lake effect snow is. I've lived it. I lived in Syracuse, three, and I lived in Denver, Colorado. I get snowstorms. I get blizzards. I've lived through them. They are now predicting, Evan, Mm. one, two, three, four, five, Six feet of snow. Devin Singletary wouldn't be able to stand. <laughs> yeah, he'd have like a tunnel. Dude, I mean, he, would, <laughs> he would not be able to, to see yeah. over the snow. So, no joke. They're talking about six feet of snow over a three-day period. I don't think there's any way they're playing the game in Buffalo. They cannot postpone the game because the Bills play Thursday night on Thanksgiving against the Detroit Lions, or maybe that's the early game, pardon me, against the Detroit Lions, they're going to move the game. And they will probably announce it later today. And my gut is that, and you actually brought it up, but I agree with you, Detroit makes a lot well, of sense. Well, the reason I brought it up is because I won't forget 2014. I won't forget the last time a snow game was moved from Buffalo. It was the New York Jets against the Buffalo Bills. It was Rex Ryan's last year as head coach. The like team Toronto, sucked. right? No, they moved it to Detroit. Was it Detroit? That's why I brought it up, yeah. Why do I think the game was like in Canada? Because they've played games in Toronto. They but it did. wasn't yeah, related yeah, okay. to a snowstorm. It was just, let's play a game in Toronto, yeah. I think. I think the Bills were flirting with the idea of moving there. And I think that's why we'll that happened. They played a couple home games there because they wanted yeah. a new stadium or whatever. It was. Yeah, yeah, now they're not doing that anymore. So they moved the game to Detroit. I don't know if anyone remembers it. They moved it to a Monday night, 7 o'clock. All right, Jets, 7 o'clock Monday night, 36 to 3. Oops. Now, maybe I'm off. Maybe it's 34 to 3. Close maybe enough. it's 35 to 3. Yeah. Here's what I know. We scored three bleeping points and got absolutely destroyed by Kyle Orton and the Buffalo Bills. Was that the Mark Sanchez Jets? That was the Michael Vick, Geno oh, Smith Jets. Ugh. And by gotcha. the way, yeah. speaking of Michael Vick, can we address maybe the greatest nickname yes, in football we can. history? We'll give it to you after the break. <laughs> Daniel Jones has a brand new nickname bestowed upon him by Saquon Barkley. We'll get to it after the break. 